So I'm ready for chapter, chapter 9 and 10 of Boy in the Tower today, guys. I've got my raging buddy. Um, and I'm ready to, to see. I really want to know what how everything started coming in after the rain stopped. Um, I'm really excited to get to that part. Um, and I'm really hoping that Michael's mum starts to get better. Chapter 9. I sort of liked school. I liked that you always knew what was coming next. You just had to look out at the timetable for the day on the board to find out. I also liked that our teacher, Miss Faraway, was always there, no questions asked. She would come and collect us from the playground at nine o'clock every single day, with the same sort of smile on her face each time, and there was not a day where she wouldn't turn up. The thing I liked most about school was Gaia. I liked nothing more than to see her smile or to make her laugh, and I never got more upset than when she was hurt by someone. Like on the day we planted our seeds. I'll never forget it. Everyone at school had been talking about a warehouse that had fallen down, just like the pub. Some children had walked right past it to come to school and they were telling us all about the broken glass and the funny bits of metal that were left in place where the warehouse had once stood. We were talking so much that Miss Faraway had to clap her hands together to stop our chatter. When we were quiet, she announced that we would plant sunflower seeds today. I didn't have to look at Gaia's face to know that she was smiling. Gaia loved growing things. She told me once about a little garden she had made on her windowsill. She had a little pot of mint and an old house plant her mum was going to throw away and it looked like it was dead but the Gaia had brought it back to life. She would collect bits for it all the time too. A green leaf from the pavement or a prickly conker case and a shiny brown conker. I'd never seen a little garden, but I could picture it perfectly in my head. I wonder if you guys, any of you guys have got a little garden in your flats. We were working on different tables that day. I'd picked out my orange flower pot and I was trying to scratch my name onto it. It wasn't working though. The pencil wouldn't make a mark on the plastic. However, I hard, however hard I pressed down. Then I looked at the others on my table and saw that they were all writing their names on white labels. I put my pencil down and tried to cover the dents and lines I had made on my pot with my sleeve. I looked everywhere for labels, but I couldn't see them anywhere. By now, everyone else was chattering about something else. I couldn't ask them. I was going to have to put my hand up and ask Miss Faraway and then explain why I hadn't listened in the first place. I never meant not to listen, but sometimes when someone apart from my mum or Gaia was talking to me, I felt like I was floating away, far up above where they were. Their voice would become very muffled, so I couldn't make out the words they were saying. A lot of teachers used to get quite cross with me when this happened. They would bellow, you are not listening, at me to make me pay attention. Miss Faraway wasn't like that. She was much kinder and sometimes would repeat things several times just for me. It still didn't stop it from happening, though. I was just about to put my hand up when Gaia caught my eye and raised her eyebrows at me as if to ask, Are you okay? I mouthed, Labels, as, clear, as clearly as I could, so she would be able to read my lips. She gave me a little nod and stood up from her table and went to Miss Faraway's desk, where there was a pile of white labels in a little green basket. Gaia, haven't you already had one of those? Miss Faraway asked. I made a mistake, so I need another one, Gaia replied. She's a good friend, isn't she? And Miss Faraway nodded and turned away. Gaia dropped the label in front of me as she went back to sit down, and I quickly wrote my name on it and stuck it onto the pot so that it looked like everybody else's. Thank you, I mouthed to Gaia. I owe you. She just smiled and looked away. After that, we filled our pots with soil. It was sticky and black and smelled of the outside when it rains. I liked the feeling of it in between my fingers. I could see that Gaia did too because she, like me, was playing with it. She was taking a pinch, of, a pinch full of soil between her fingers and then rubbing it together so that it fell, fell into the pot like snow. Miss Faraway, Gaia's making a mess, someone from her table called out. Gardening's a messy business. You have to get your hands dirty, said Miss Faraway. But it's 
better to be outside to get really messy. Can you stop that in here, Gaia? Thank you. Gaia nodded. But I could see by the way she sucked in her cheeks ever so slightly that she felt a bit embarrassed. After that, we chose a sunflower seed to plant. One each. I spent a long time choosing mine. It had thick stripes down the middle and then thin ones down the side. Oh, excuse me. I made a little hole in the soil with my finger for the seed and then covered it up so that you could not see it at all. I looked over at Gaia. She hadn't planted hers yet. She was still holding it in her hand and it looked like she was whispering something under her breath. Miss Faraway, Gaia's talking to her seed. A girl from her table shouted out. The whole class laughed loudly. Ugh. It took Miss Faraway a few minutes to get everyone quiet again. By then, Gaia had shoved her seed into a pot and was looking down at her lap so that, she couldn't see her, so that I couldn't see her face. How do you think Gaia's feeling at this point? Two people have called her out on something that's not hurting anybody else. And people are laughing at her. How do you think she's feeling? Yeah, she's looking down. She's embarrassed. She's not feeling great. We went out to play not long after that. Gaia marching ahead of me. I hurried after her, but overheard two people talking. Did you do it? Yeah. I just went in and Miss wasn't there. She's looking at us right now. Freaky Gaia. Hearing her name made me stop right behind the two girls. Where did you put it? In the bin. She's going to be talking to just an empty pot from now on. Ha! <laughs> She's such a weirdo. Yeah, she's such a weirdo. They were looking right at her as they talked. They couldn't have known she could understand what they were saying from all the way across the playground. Only I could see from the look on her face that she'd understood exactly what they'd said. I don't know if I'm a very good friend to Gaia. I felt very, very angry, but I'm not the kind of friend who, hearing that, would have gone up to those girls and say, Leave Gaia alone! and then maybe hit them across the face for being so mean. There are people who are like that, but I'm not. I'm not even the kind of friend who knows the right thing to say to cheer her up. I didn't run straight over to her and say nice things that would make her feel better. I thought about it for a minute before I decided what I would do. I went back inside to our classroom. Miss Faraway was still not there, but I had to be quick. I went to my pot and pushed the soil away until I found my seed. Then I found Gaia's pot with her neat curly writing on it and I buried the seed deep inside the soil. In the end, mine was not the only pot that didn't have a little seedling in it. A few others didn't grow at all. But Gaia's did. It grew taller than the rest. He's such a nice boy. Maybe he didn't know what to do to comfort Gaia. But he's certainly kind and he certainly showed that. And I bet Gaia appreciated that. Pretty sad that people were treating Gaia like that. I see that happen quite a lot in schools. You have to put yourself in that person's shoes. Would you like it to be done to you? I'm thinking more often than not, you wouldn't. It's a shame. Chapter 10. The next day, another two buildings had fallen down. The first one was an upholsterer's workshop. The second was actually somebody's house. It was one of those quite small ones which joins onto the houses next to it in a little row. We had to walk past it to get to school. It looked a bit like someone had just cut the house out. Like how you would take a slice of cake. I asked Michael's mum who had lived there, but she shushed me. She didn't want to talk about it. Did you hear about the buildings that have fallen down? I asked Gaia. Guy looked at me as if she was saying, What do you take me for? Of course I have, Adiola. Everyone's talking about it. Sorry, I know, I said. It's just that Mum hasn't said much to me about it, so I wasn't sure. My voice trailed off. What I was going to say was, I wasn't sure how big a deal it was. I know that might sound a bit stupid, but sometimes it's hard until you've spoken to someone else about something to know how serious it is. Gaia looked at me softly. It's quite bad, Addy. They don't know what's causing it. People are getting scared. 
I looked away from her gaze. We just need to wake up tomorrow and hear that nowhere else has fallen down, she said. Then I think everyone will calm down. Did you hear about that little house that fell? I shook my head. There was an old woman living there. They found her body underneath some bricks. We both went quiet for a moment. But this is the weird thing, continued Gaia. There weren't nearly enough bricks there where the house fell. There should have been loads and loads more. The same thing happened with the pub and the warehouse and the other place. The workshop, I said. What? The other place was the upholsterer's workshop. Right, the workshop. So I think someone is taking the bricks. So you think a person is doing this? I asked. To steal bricks? I don't know, Gaia said. But I can't think why else it's happening. Why do you think they're falling? I don't know. I guess I thought there was just something wrong with those buildings. But why those ones? And why is it happening all of a sudden, all at the same time, Gaia said. But why would anyone want to steal bricks like that? I don't know, Gaia said. How about... How about... Because there's a monster who only likes the taste of bricks from Camberwell? Yes, I said, warming up to the idea. And he hates the taste of bricks from anywhere else. Yeah, he tried the ones in Elephant and Castle and spat them all out. And don't get him started on the bricks in Peckham. They're far too salty. He only comes out at night because he's very shy about people seeing him eat. We laughed at each other. He doesn't mean to harm anyone, I continued. He's quite a nice monster, really. He's really sorry about the old lady who died. Quickly, our grins fell from our faces. It wasn't a joke. A story we'd made up. Someone had gone to bed one night thinking everything was okay, but the next morning they would never wake up, lying buried under the rubble of their own house. I wonder what's really going on, said Gaia. When is it going to end? I didn't say, but there was a question in my mind too. I wondered if more people would get hurt along the way. Turned out, I was right to worry. Chapter 11 and 12 tomorrow, guys. I want you to have a think about what might happen going forward. What is going on with these bricks and how many others do you think it will happen to before school closes make that prediction i look forward to reading the next two chapters with you tomorrow